girls, calm down. They do this just like two-year-olds to get my attention. The girls are crazy right now. Do you hear them going? <laughs> everybody it's PJ and this morning I wanted to talk to you about what seems to be on a lot of people's mind right now because of what happened with Donald Trump and the things that people heard him say about how he uh, sexually assaults women um, and I don't want to talk about politics I'm not going there I wanted to talk to you about sexual assault I think that it's um, really prevalent and that a lot of people don't talk about it, that we just okie doke it and kind of allow it because it it's like kind of like the female curse that, and I'm sure some men too, but it feels more female to me. And so I wanted to just uh, talk to you guys about my first, or not first, but my experience uh, as an adult getting sexually harassed in a really, really kind of freaky way. Um, right after I stopped working on the psychic lines, I started working for this other uh, marketing company. And, calm down. So, uh, I worked for this marketing company. And it was a small, small company. And it was... Um, and me and another friend went the same day and got the job there. Uh, we worked under this woman who was seeing the boss. And the boss wasn't always there, but he was a very big guy. He was like huge. He was like, somebody told me once he had a 54 inch chest. He was like huge, but he wasn't like fat. He was just like huge. But anyway, um, and the woman who was my boss was dating him and he had a living girl, <laughs> by the way, but that wasn't any of my business, you know, like this doesn't have, that didn't have anything to do with me except for the woman he was dating was like a redhead, but kind of was built like me. Um, and maybe not that I'm blaming my body, but maybe that's why it ended up being me that he went after um, anyway, the woman that he was dating on the side, the one that I worked under, she had to leave for months and, um, he had to take over a lot of her business. So we were all working pretty closely together at that point. And, uh, I had Jeff at home. I wasn't single. I have no idea how this all started, but so what he used to okay so he started doing weird things coming up behind me and like doing that thing where they grab the sides of you and you jerk um like he was being funny but real touchy-feely and i told my girlfriend that worked alongside of me kristen that he was giving me the creeps you know Anyway, um one day i was cleaning up stuff on his desk he wasn't there and he had had this he was a doodler. He would doodle and doodle and doodle. Like an entire paper would have all these little tiny doodles all over it. And I went to throw one of his doodle papers out. And on it, it had my name. And then it said tits. And then it had my name. And then it said sexy. And then it, and I was like, oh, what is this? You know? So for whatever reason, I folded that paper up and put it in my purse couple weeks later, um, he was in there and our fax machine didn't have a tray to catch the papers. So for whatever reason, we would let it fall on the floor and pick it up instead of putting a tray there, but whatever. Anyway, um, he would like say, like holler my name from across the office and make me come pick up all the papers while he sat there. And I was like, this is creepy, but you know, you don't want to like accuse somebody without something real or anything so this goes on and on and then one day he tell he like had picked up all these papers off the floor from a fax and he's like look at all these numbers they're wrong which really didn't have anything to do with my job there but he was like 
he was like, we're going to stay all night and figure this out. We're going to make this work. Like, you're going to be here with me all night. And I said, no, I can't do that. Like, I'm not staying any later than anybody else. I have to go home. I have a boyfriend waiting for dinner. And we would work until like 9, 930. So the next day came, so we all left, nothing, you know, happened or anything weird. I just thought it was weird that he kept pointing me out, you know. The next day comes and we all go to work. And I said to Kristen, listen, Kristen, he keeps trying to get me alone. That's what it felt like. And I said, I know, maybe I'm paranoid, but I don't want you to leave this building without me. And she made a promise that she wouldn't. So, so... Um, we were the last ones there. He kept making me do stuff to like keep me staying. And then he would say to Kristen, what are you doing here? What are you doing? And she would like make something up because we were just so freaked out at this point. And um, he said, he, he went again with the paper. He was like, these numbers are wrong and I'm figuring this out and you're going to sit next to me all night. So I said, well, show me, show me right now what you want me to do. I'll take it home and do it. No, we're going to do this. So I said, well, I'm not staying. So, you know, if you want to do something about this, do it now. And he's like, no, we're going to have dinner and then we're going to have coffee and then we're going to spend the night figuring this out. And I was like, no, we're not. Right. I said, no. I said, I, I'm not staying like that. I'm not having dinner. Jeff's waiting for me home. I'm going home. So, and my kids, Jeff and the kids are waiting for me home. And so, um, he's like, okay, fuck it. And he like grabs all the papers and he's like, I'll do it myself. He was like screaming and being all weird. And so I was like, fine. So Kristen and I, the way the building was, was there was a door downstairs to our office, and then there was a glass door up the steps, you know, because there was other offices in the same building. So, and our cars were parked like this. Mine was here, his was here, and then behind me was Kristen. So, we all get in our cars, because I told her, don't leave me there. Like, make sure I'm in my car, and my car is on. So we all get in my in our cars and start our cars. Now, we had locked the door downstairs, but we never locked the glass door because um, there were other buildings there and like we didn't know who had a key or didn't and there was other offices. So Kristen backs up and pulls out. She kind of had to the way we were set up first, but I'm in my car, my car is locked and I could see her eyes. I'll never forget that. I could see her eyes as we left. She was like, as we pulled away. But it was a time before cell phones, remember? We didn't have cell phones then in our cars or anything. So then he, and then he would have had to pull out, right? And I, then I would pull out. But this is what happened. We both start to pull out and I was going to go like this and wait for him to pull out. And then we both go. Right. But instead I pull out, he pulls out and he stops and I pull like this. I'm like, what's he doing? So now I can't go around him in any way. He's just in front of me. He's like T-boning me. So I'm like, what do you, so I say, what are you doing? And he's like, you didn't lock that door. <clears throat> You didn't lock the glass door. And I'm like, I said, we, oh, I almost said his name again. I said, we don't lock that door. And he's like, you, I'm not going to get robbed. I'm not getting in trouble. You get up there and lock that door. So, okay. So I get up, I go out, I lock the door, but like, I'm really aware of whether or not he's getting out of his car, which so far he's not. But as I go around my car to get back in, he jumps out and comes storming, storming, angry. Not, this wasn't like, um, this wasn't him flirting. This wasn't him being affectionate. This was him being angry and aggressive. And I have no idea why, like to this day. And so I get in my car and close the door and he comes to the window and bangs on it. And I said, what? You're freaking me out. And he's like, roll down the window. 
furious. So I rolled it down. Yeah, that much. He pu pushes his hand through the window and I had on like a tank top and he grabs me by my bra and tank top and just starts just tr trying to pull me out of this much of a window. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm screaming and pushing away from the window because he's pulling me to it. And he's laughing like, ha, 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 but like really nasty. And I'm like, what the fuck, right? So I say to him, what's wrong with you? Stop it. And he, he like shook me around and then he kind of like started to leave me go. And I thought, get the window. So I took this hand and cause I was holding on to my bronze stuff on him. I was holding his hand that was holding all that here and I hit the button on the window and started rolling up the window and he pulled his hand out and he leaned in the window and went, um, he said, see ya, don't want to be ya, what? And then he like stormed into his car and left and as soon as he got in his car and pulled out, I just started crying. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck was that? So I went home, I called Kristen, I told her about it. She was like, okay, well, we're just going to go get our paychecks because she's quitting too at this point because he's just a fucking weirdo. So we go down in the morning and his, the girlfriend he lives with, because remember the girlfriend he was dating on the side is gone, which I think that was like part of the problem. Her name was on that piece of paper too, by the way. And, um... So the girlfriend's there and we walk, me and Kristen walk down and she's, she like attacks me. What are you doing there? I heard you tried to get into his pants and what? I was like, oh my God, this is like the world turned upside down. I wouldn't ever try to get into that man's pants. And more than that, give me my check. We're leaving. You're not getting it. Here he comes out of the room. You're not getting anything. You're not getting your last check. All this shit, right? Luckily, Kristen's boyfriend was this big guy. They knew each other and he was, and my boss was intimidated by Kristen's boyfriend, big time. And so Kristen called her boyfriend and said, you know what? Come on down here and escort us out of here. And he came down and walked into my boss's office and said, what's going on here? And my boss said, um, uh, the girls are leaving. I'm just giving them their last check and pulled a checkbook out and wrote us each a check. And we went instantly and cashed them like that five minutes. Like we were not going to waste time because I, who knew what he would have done. And I never looked back, but, um, that's just like, it was out of nowhere. I can't think of anything I ever did that would make him feel like there was some opening. And also it wasn't even, it wasn't even sexual so much as angry, so angry. That's one of my sexual harassment stories. It was really scary and really horrible. And what I really want is a safe place for you to tell your story. So either post it, make a video, leave it below, but I'd love to hear all your stories and just know you're not alone. That It happens to everybody. I mean, this stuff with Trump like brought it up, but so many people last night on Twitter, this lady went on, uh, she's a writer. And she wrote, um, first it was, it was okay first or not okay first. That was the hashtag. And she said, anybody that wants to post their first time they were ever sexually harassed and they were getting two a minute. And it was like thousands and thousands and thousands of girls on Twitter were saying, what happened? Like their first experience with sexual harassment. It is so prevalent and it's so wrong and it's not your fault. Nothing I did created whatever was in that guy's mind. 
like it wasn't from me. I didn't have any of those feelings. I would not have, even if I did, I wouldn't have behaved like that. And so just for your own kind of, just know it's not your fault. You know, you didn't do anything wrong. These men, um, they just take it upon themselves that it's something that they want and they take. And that is, is wrong. And you need to teach your daughters and your mothers and people in nursing homes all the way down to nurseries. <clears throat> you would be surprised. Go on Twitter and look at that has hashtag. Some of these people were four and three years old. Now, I wasn't that young my first time I was sexually harassed. was probably around eight. But, and it was minor with another kid, but he was definitely older than me. But the point is, is that there's, it happens to women all the time. And we need to be empowered enough to let guys and men know it's not okay. It's not okay to take advantage of me. It's not okay to be aggressive to me, to be, to, if I say no, it's no. And, and if I'm too young to know the difference, then you're a pro, you know, that's a huge problem. And, and that we need to tell, we need to, I never told anybody about this, like my girlfriend, but like, I never went to the authorities. I never pushed it. I, nothing, because the minute I got to work the next day, I was like kind of accused. And that's like kind of how they do it. They make the victims, the villains. And so, this is a safe place. Put whatever you need to below. Um, know that there are, you are not alone. That there are a thousands upon thousands upon thousands of stories just like mine. It happens to everybody. The smartest, the strongest. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's not our bad. We're not the ones doing it. So, anyway... That's my sexual harassment story. One of them. I have a few. And, uh, yeah, if it triggered you, I'm sorry. But I just thought, you know, you need to know it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything to provoke them. They're just provoked by their own thoughts and think they can take what they want. And that's the problem. They think, that they're, they think they're entitled to taking things that aren't theirs, you know, so... Anyway, I'm going to post like some sort of hotlines down here in case anybody needs one. And I love you guys. Thinking about all of you. If you'd like to follow me down the rabbit hole that is my life, hit the button down below and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of video. A thumbs down if you don't. Either way, got you watching me manifest something wonderful in your life. If you know it, think it, believe it, you can have it too. And I'm just going to say like a peaceful, safe, environment for work or for school or anywhere where you feel threatened make sure you tell somebody okay because there are people out there that help and for some reason we feel ashamed to ask for help that's how I felt I felt like embarrassed to ask for help so make sure you ask for help I'll post something below and I love you guys bye